Hey everybody, how's it going? So, uh, quick tip video tonight on um, on how to hide your Z seam. Um, in a well, in not only an idea maker, but uh, whether you're using Cure or S3D or, or Prusa or Prusa Slice or whatever you're using, they all they, I think they all pretty much have the same type of feature. Whether they they may call it something a little bit different from from software to software, but uh, the, the concept is the same. I'm pretty sure that it's there in just about all of them. But about um, you know. Y not making your Z seam invisible because I think that's, at least in my experience, it's been relatively impossible, but lessening its appearance um, by um, by having a little bit more control over uh, where its position is uh, in your printed model. So you know, of course, we're talking specifically about you know FDM type machines. When we're talking resin printers, there is no Z seam. There's just layer lines, but there's no there's no Z seam. So um, anyway. Let's. Uh, we had a request from, or I had a request from, from one of the subscribers about doing a, doing this video. So thanks for the suggestion, and and here you go. Here's your video. Uh, so we'll talk about doing it uh, on like, you know, squ uh, square, rectangular type models, and then cylindrical or or spherical objects, and how best to sort of hide that. Or at least these will be my uh, my preferences, and then I'll tell you how I do it, and then you guys go do whatever you want to do. Um, but uh, so if we've got a square here. Um, you know, typically I remember when I first started printing, and I think I was using uh, Cura to start. Um, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really understand the starts and stops very much. Why I was getting zits and blobs, or having gaps, or or thin starts um, on the next layer line, sort of leaving some of that Swiss cheese uh, where starts and stops happen. And so, um, and it wasn't until later on. It wasn't necessarily because of Idea Maker, but it wasn't until I. I really started, you know, getting into it and using Idea Maker more, and sort of understanding each one of the features, uh, how to sort of tweak and tune um, uh, the behavior of my printer to produce better results. Uh, so again, I'll uh, we'll, we'll talk about position, and then we'll talk real briefly about uh, if you are getting zits and blobs and gaps, how you can maybe uh, there's a couple of settings that you can tweak and play with uh, for your printer um, to maybe yield some some different results. So, uh, so here we go. We've got. Uh, I'm on my Ender three. Um, the Ender three bed is what 220 by 220 millimeters in the X and Y, um, and so those are kind of key numbers for now. But uh, so I've brought in this little calibration cube uh, and scaled it up a bit. So if we go to a standard slicing template, I'll just use my my PLA template for my Ender. Uh, go to the Edit button. Most of where you're going to be doing the the positioning changes is going to be right here on this first tab, the layer tab. Um, and down here at the bottom where you've got this layer start point. So um, specifically, if you think of it just relative to what it's telling you, uh, and if you mouse over, right, you'll get the, the help stuff here, but at the, the start of each layer point, where do you want that to start relative to where your last layer ended? So if you're saying here, which is the, the first is the nearest, so where my last layer ended, start my next layer nearest that. Now, again, that could be completely random depending on your model. It could be in the middle of a wall, it could be on the corner, uh, if you've told it to print outside in versus inside out, you know, so all these things matter. Uh, so if you say your start layer point is going to be nearest, uh, and then you also have this, um, this additional place seam on a corner, reflex or convex corner, so a reflex or convex corner, um, or you can say no specifically a reflex or specifically a convex corner depending on your model or none you're just saying do it nearest but that gives you a little bit of control so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, just for for uh, well for fun we'll do nearest nearest or auto either one uh, now let's do nearest nearest and reflex or convex corner I don't want to get too wrapped up in some of these because this will turn into a longer video um, so, so to properly hide this seam on a, on a print like that, like that box, I would do something like this. Nearest layer start point, but make sure it's on a corner, either inside or outside corner. Save that, slice it. So again, we're gonna let this go through and we're always gonna look at the preview, right? Because this, this avoids you having to go through and making a change and printing something, seeing the result. Making a change, printing something, seeing the result. That's what the preview's for. Look at the preview um, and, and really analyze it because there's details in here that um, if you don't, if you're not looking for it, you wouldn't, you know, you don't know what you don't know. But the preview is very good about telling you exactly what it's going to do. So what I do is in this basic view here, you don't, you don't get much, right? You get the structured view, and if you zoom up and down, 
you don't really know where your layer starts and stops are. Unless you untick this no travel move, right? So now we've got some blue lines. The blue lines are travel moves, right? Um, and travel moves are not extrude moves. They're simply moving the head to a new location. Uh, I also like to say show retractions. So that's these little X's. The X's are retractions on Idea Maker. Now, um, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know exactly, I can't remember how Cura or S3D shows these things. Uh, I believe it actually shows a little bit better in the preview where your layer starts and stops are if, if memory serves. But uh, um, but if you, if you ID in here on some of these things, you can see here that there is a, a travel move from outside to in to start the next layer. And again, this is the last layer at the top. So let's, let's go all the way down to the bottom here and see what's happening. We go down to the bottom, we start moving up. We see our travel, it comes over, starts doing its print. And this is the start and stop of that first layer. So it's right here on this corner, right where we told it to. Now our next one should be pretty close to that. Well, it's on this other corner, but it's still on a corner. And back on a corner, other corner, same corner. So now I'm into my walls and not uh, this the, the solid base at the bottom. So that's why it's now staying where it was. So I have a, a feeling that it was changing corners because that's where the starts and stops of the, of the, the, the line infill was happening. Um, so moving up and down, so I would imagine all the way up until like the top few layers, it's going to be in the same in the same corner here. So if we scroll up, just kind of fast forward through this. Yeah, so now we're getting into the crosshatch pattern of the solid infill, which obviously this wouldn't work because it's hollow. But this first layer in, now we're, we're still in the same corner, now it should bypass and go over to this next corner here. It does because my lines change. So now you're going back and forth because that's how that's where the, the nearest point of your last layer stopped. So that's how I'd hide it on a box. I'd say I'd say put it nearest because um, that helps you with your efficiency of your print times. But but I want it hidden on a corner. I don't want it stuck in the middle of a wall or have a bunch of random blobs all around this thing. Um, you'll have a more consistent print, at least in my experience, throwing it on a corner if you can or in a, in a specific location. So so that's that one. Let's delete this and let's go with um, a, a spherical model here. So this is my trusty uh, F-bomb. I've printed many for friends and family uh, and for myself. But I normally print this at 150%. Uh, and I also usually sink him in the bed by about 5 millimeters so I have something flat to print on. Uh, and what I like to do is around the back here is put a put the Z seam right on the back. Uh, I don't want a bunch of starts and stops around. I like to see uh, a nice clean wall all the way around this thing. Uh, and then if I've got like a little zipper running up the back, it's totally fine. It's sort of hidden. It almost makes it look like a you know a two-piece molded part or something like that. It's kind of cool. So same thing. Let's go slice. Let's go edit. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do in this case is my layer start point. I want to say fixed. And I'm saying on my x-axis, right? So if the x is 220 long, I'm saying put it in the middle of my x. And then on my y, I'm saying put it at 220, so all the way in the back of my printer. So middle, back is where I want this thing to go. And you notice here that it's uh, my, my options here for putting it on a corner are gone when you pick fixed, because you're, you're specifying a specific location. So the software would do a pretty good job of putting it there. It may not be in that exact location every time, um, but it's going to get it close. So again, preview, preview your friend, uh, and you can see if you're zooming in on the software, um, these little gaps. That's your start and stop of your of your Z seam. So you can tell there's a little deviation from that. So here, here, here. Um, but overall, um, the Z is going right up the back where I told it to go. Uh, again, up here as your layers get smaller, um, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, that's where I like to do it. Uh, Feel free to do whatever you want. Um, now, if we go back and we say slice, just to just as a comparison, if we said uh, random and save and slice, and we just said put it wherever you want, software, um, you know, be as efficient as you can be. Uh, you see, the times didn't really change very much because it's still the same amount of um, filament being put down, the travel moves are about the same, so there's really no time difference here between where you put the seam 
uh, if you fix it versus saying do it random. Um, maybe maybe we're talking a you know half a minute or something like that. But now you'll see here all those little pits that were in one spot in the fix are now dotted all over the print. Here, 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 here. Um, and so you've got to know, like I said, you kind of have to know in the preview what to look for. Uh, if you if you didn't know to look for it, you wouldn't even know. So um, again, you can turn the travel off or show your travel moves and then show your retractions uh, if you want to get an idea of where that's happening. And wherever these blue lines are intersecting the walls, though it's and where your red X's are for your retractions, um, there's a good opportunity, or that's a, probably a, a pretty good guess that that's where your Z seam is going to be, whether it's random or fixed or whatever. So anyway, there you go. So in this case, if you don't if you don't have a pretty well tuned profile for whatever uh, filament you're using, you can get zits and blobs and gaps in that Z seam location. Um, it, it especially depends on what type of uh, filament you're printing with. So in standard PLA, where you're going to play with some of these extra little um, settings for your zits and blobs, is usually on your extruder tab. These are the ones, um, if I was giving you advice, and I am because of because it's my video, <laughs> but um, here's what I would play with. So retraction amount. So again, this if you're not running an Ender or a CR10 or you know something a Bowden style setup, these retraction settings uh, and coasting and stuff aren't going to help you. If you're running a direct driver, it, um, you, you need to play a little bit with your settings. But it's there uh, as far as the amounts, the the, the actual settings here can, can aren't going to change too much. But so I run my retraction on PLA between five and six millimeters of retraction. Anything more than that, I've talked about it in other videos, is it's kind of pointless because you're you're pulling filament like all the way out of the nozzle, and you're you're just waiting for a clog. Um, so that I play with between five and six, um, and then this extra restart amount I have it at a negative uh, 0.2 millimeters. Uh, so you can play with that like uh, negative 0.2, negative 0.25, negative 0.3, go the other way. Uh, and then this coasting distance. So, so coasting is um, um, as it's wrapping up the end of a layer, um, it will stop extruding the last 0.2 millimeters of that layer and just allow whatever's in the nozzle to sort of ooze out. And then it'll retract and move and start the next layer. So that's what coasting does. So if you're getting zits and blobs, meaning you have excess material at the stop of a layer, then let it coast a little bit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too crazy with this number because then you'll start getting some big gaps where your Z seams are. But that coast, especially if you're using things like uh, PETG, which is very stringy um, and likes to continue to ooze even while it's traveling, this one is a good one to play with as well as this extra restart amount. So those are the two items that I would play with uh, a little bit if you're having problems with zits and blobs or gaps. Um, again, my you know my printer's my printer and my filament's my filament. This is, seems to work well for me in reducing some of that. So those are the things that you'll have to play with. So, so anyway, there you go. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, thanks for, um, I, had a, uh, I don't know if I said it before, but I had a user um, make the video suggestion. So thank you, here's your video. I appreciate the, the content suggestion. And, uh, and I'll hopefully see you guys soon. This is, uh, I'm running the 4.0 beta, so I'm still going through some of the new features, and I'm sure I'll have a, a, a beta video out here pretty soon to talk about some of the new cool things. So again, thanks, thanks for all your support, and talk to you soon.